Which house is yours? 528. It's a vacant lot. Yeah, it's a vacant lot because someone stole my house. We needed to create a house that was in the story, uh, picked up from one location and dropped in the middle of the desert. The desert is actually uh, more grassland, but it is the high desert technically. It was oil fields and now they grow alfalfa and they have cows and it's just a big open area with a road running down the middle of it. With the writers, it's easy to show them a reference and say, do you like something like this? And then what are the parameters? What are the major milestones that this set has to achieve? And the references that I showed them were an old house, 1920s construction, and uh, they liked that, they liked the character, they liked the aging, and other than that, it had to fit on the back of a truck. We've built three different houses, interior, exterior, a moving house. We jacked up and pulled a truck underneath it and drove it away. A house at the end flipped up in the air. The third one would be back here where we built the interior. I wanted to have the plaster fall off the walls and underneath the plaster I wanted to see something interesting like lath. It has a little more character than just drywall and studs. This is a story about a house that was in the family for a long time so I think it led itself to this type of construction. It had some, had some character and some charm and some set dressing details that made it look like somebody once loved it and once cared for it and now it's just kind of falling apart. A lot of suspects here boss. Husband, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, Fred. A whole lot of house to process. In this particular episode, the house is a huge character, you know, and the people that live in it. The idea was to have everything kind of in place, and as the house moves, it just gets progressively worse and worse, and, you know, and the house, we had to dress it as if it had been moved for miles and miles and miles. So, you know, furniture had, you know, fallen on its side and the fridge had kind of moved around and everything had fallen out of the cabinets and the ceramic collection that was on the shelves had all fallen on the floor and shattered into millions of pieces and the house itself had, had kind of, you know, cracked and fallen apart. So, I mean, there were a lot of different elements that, that we had to kind of think of and all work together on. Somebody give me a hell yeah? Hell yeah! <laughs> we went out to Pico Canyon, took a house that we built here, out to Pico Canyon and built it there in the canyon. It was built in sections, like the whole front wall, which is 30 feet long, was built in three sections so we could load it all into a truck. We had all of our roof sections pre-built into 10-foot sections. We had porches that hung off the house with broken members, like when they picked the house up, the porches broke and kind of fell off. Plus, we had to have structure inside the house to hold the house up. So we had a main wall running through the inside of the house that all tied to the front wall, but just make it so the house couldn't fall down. And we set it on a mechanical floor built by special effects. We had to uh, rig a house to be jacked up. Um, and then safely come down. We had to construct a big metal channel frame and a big hinge underneath the house and then use hydraulics to lift and retract the house. We are using real lifting bags on the corners of the house when it lifts up. They're not actually doing the lifting. We're actually lifting the house by hydraulics that are off camera, but they serve as a good stability platform as it's going up. Is it even possible to move a whole house overnight? Yeah. Yeah, actually it is. It's not really that hard to do. In this episode, there's some visual effects of, of them taking the house. It's a series of plate shots that visual effects will do. They will CG part of the house that's going down the road. It's not really on the back of the truck. Anything that we can mix with visual effects, where part of it is a special effects, mechanical effect, and part of it is a visual effect, um, is, is what we try to achieve. We went out there and photographed the house in the 360. So we have digital stills and video of all the details, the textures, we have the blueprints that our department used to build that facade. And then our job is to take that into the computer and recreate it. So we'll use all the photos as reference for what the windows should have looked like, the color of the paint, any of the aging, any of the props and set deck that was done to the exterior of the house. Those are all things that we'll go back then and build digitally. And that'll show up in the two shots that we're creating for the episode. 
And the first shot is a ghost shot, so it's a, the house is sort of semi-transparent and you see through it, so the level of detail isn't quite as detailed in that scenario, but for the traffic cam, if I'm stealing the house, it has to look like a, we really put a house in the back of that truck and drove it through frame. So probably two weeks to model the house and a week of compositing and rendering, so three weeks beginning to end. Inside the computer, I have full control. Once I've tracked the shot, I know what camera lenses I used to shoot the shot practically. Those are the same lenses we use for our digital cameras in the computer, and then everything lines up. We render the shot, and suddenly you have a house in the back of a tractor trailer driving through frame.